Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. You know, so far, Necromunda's been fine for the boys. But how about the girls? I have not picked up any of the Forge World stuff yet of any of the female models that they've released. So when I saw Athera here as I wait for our Lady Hera, or whatever her name is, uh, the Blade of the Matriarch, I was like, well, this is something that looks right up my alley. Look at me, she's got these crazy, nasty, spiked shoes. She's got power armor, she's got ridiculous hair, she's got a flashy cape, she's got all kinds of flashy bits hanging off her armor. She has a chain axe, which you don't see very often, and a kind of funky looking plasma pistol there. And she's got her little buddy, and I can't remember what the name of those things are. And as always with these Forge World kits, you get all kinds of parts and associated goodies in there, so why don't we try not to destroy the packaging too much as we get her out, and we'll see what she consists of. All right, so here we go. Well, construction-wise doesn't look too bad, not too many parts, assuming that everything is where it's supposed to be, because last Forge World model I built they didn't actually have everything listed part-wise. Cre created? Created? Sticks! It's sticks. Not stitch, but sticks. All right. So our created gets a little 20-ish, 20, 25 millimeter base. I don't know, 20. Looking like a 32 for our boss lady. Of course, nothing is on the sprue where it needs to be. You can see her leg there with the giant spikes that everything needs to be cleaned out of. Fun. <laughs> Same thing on the other one. Dang it. Same thing on the axe. Which isn't all that surprising, having done Ajax and... Uh, Gorshiv and our kill fist guy. Just Goliaths in general. There's our pistol. There's our Karyatid's head. And hair for our lady friend. Part of her jacket, I'm assuming. Like, I could look at the directions, but I won't. Our Karyatid's body. This little flashy scarf. I don't know what that was. Hmm. Okay, all of that hair is going to be attached to studs on her head. That is her head there. Loin cloth with bird head skull. Top of the torso. Flashy collar. It's always a plus for a Escher model. Ponytail. Uh, I don't know what this is. It looks like Flash, Flash, and, yeah, the remainder of her jacket. Okay. We can handle that, I think. You know, the rest looks like just junk. We'll get her put together and her familiar here sticks. And hopefully I won't demolish it in the process. Fingers crossed. And we'll grab some of our other Forge World models. And I swear I have painted some Escher at one point or another. They're the one gang I think I have painted the least. Possibly tied with Cawdor. We'll have to see. But anyway, sit tight. We'll get it put together. Alright. Here's sticks. <laughs> Never mind, uh, Athera. Here's her... Created... Craddy did. I don't know what he's called. Exotic Beast Guy. Not super exciting. That's a great sculpt, though. You, you can feel the ambivalence and irritation in his face there. Got his little 20 millimeter base. I think it's 20. Maybe it's 25. It's a regular Necromunda base. Uh, but here's Athera herself. And I'm, I'm of two minds because I know I just have like a piece of blue tack there, slapping her on the base. I don't know if I'm going to keep her on a Necromunda base. It seems like even the actual 
flyer artwork. I don't think that's a Necromunda base. I think they just stuck her on a generic one. And to me, it makes more sense considering she's standing on a pile of scrap. She did go together pretty quickly. Uh, you can see I probably need to clean up a little bit better in some spots, especially around those blades on her shoes. And I cheated a little bit and I glued the back of her ponytail to the tip of the collar of her jacket there. thought that might be a little bit more helpful and effective for her. She certainly has a lot more presence than the typical Escher figure. Now, I swear I've painted Eschers before, but I can't find any. But just, I've at least got this one. Like she has a face somewhere in there, doesn't she? Okay, yeah. She's definitely a, a bit larger than life, at the very least, because of that collar, her hair, her armor, her weapons. Uh, she's going to be, you know, a, a pretty noticeable force when it comes to being deployed on the table in whatever game you have her in. Hanging with a couple of the other big guys from Forge World that we've got painted at this point. You can see she's in pretty good company here. Gorshev being a little bit bigger, but then again, he's just big in general. He's on a bigger base. Now that I think about it, he didn't have a Necromunda base, whereas she did. Interesting. Interesting to see him. As well as Ajax Gorgoth there. Comparison to a good old... That's way too zoomed in. Marine. <laughs> She's actually bigger. Her hair at least is bigger than a basic marine. She looks like she can go toe to toe with the Primaris. That's kind of sad. That's funny. <laughs> she looks bigger than a Goliath. Yeah, I've got literally every other gang painted for Necromunda. Except her. I don't know where my Eschers are. I know I painted some. It's really annoying. So she's at least in good company. And again, I've said this in every single Necromunda video I've done at this point, and I'll continue to, to point it out because I think it always is worth repeating. Um, if you're going to use these models, because I know, especially with like the Chaos stuff, Cultist type stuff, there tends to be a lot of iconography and very distinct 40k markings whereas there really isn't on her i mean obviously that's a plasma gun and you know if you've spent enough time building or are familiar with the escher models for necromunda you know the spikes on the various parts of the armor the bird skulls the various furs and leathers and materials that they use to make their armor with the straps everywhere uh, it's it's pretty typical of their style I think I got most of the blades cleaned out decently. I might go back over it again. But, you know, I think she'd make just as nice of you know, rogue trader model, somebody in an inquisitorial retinue, if you just want to keep it in the 40k universe. You know, stuff like five parsecs, I think she'd look great in there. Things like urban manhunt, um, planet 28, space weirdos, you name it. I think just the, the style that a lot of the modern necro stuff exhibits really lends itself well to a variety of sci-fi settings whereas you know i know a marine is always a marine but you know like the ash waste nomads can be who knows you could use these as all kinds of stuff just like her i think honestly with that jacket especially it it really has that dashing daring do that i would expect of a rogue trader so, I don't know, I might use her for, like, a captain next time I get around to trying five parsecs. Actually, what I thought would be kind of fun, 
I'm desperately looking for the model I grabbed. I want to grab some of the cannon fodder models, the female ones. And I thought that might be kind of fun to have her leading like a penal legion or something, you know, for a kill team. Might be kind of an interesting look. And I know there's some extra War Games Atlantic bits that might be fun to goof around with. So a model like this really, to me, gets me excited for what the possibilities it can offer, both in terms of play. I mean, I've obviously got the rules right here. Uh, we'll hold on to those, absolutely. But not just within the 40k hobby, but, you know, just tabletop gaming in general. I think that's the coolest thing about a lot of these Necromunda models, is they're not limited to whatever their specific you know, section of gaming is. You can get away and use a lot of creativity with these guys. Or gals. So, I'm excited. We will hopefully see her painted in the near future. And hopefully we will get her in some games at that point as well. So, uh, with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.